We are proud to claim the title of United States Marine. Sergeant said I wasn't thinking, so he clamped this thing on my head and said it'd help me to think. And you know something? He's right. I've been sitting there with this bucket on my head and just thinking and thinking and thinking. What were you thinking about, Tom? How easy it is to think under there. My grandma moves faster than that. Well, bless her heart. Shazam. 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 He wants us both to call him Dad. Hey, that almost makes us kind of like brothers. Oh, yeah. Go all away. I'm smiling. I think you haven't seen anybody smile before. Oh, sure, but it looks kind of funny when you do it. I mean, when you've been lonesome for a long time, and then you hear that one girl's voice, well, the birds start to sing, and the sun starts to shine, and then you ain't lonesome anymore. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Go on. Hey, Mr. President. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Go on. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Surprise is the message for the day. Comes from Mark in chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. It's the story of uh, the man who Jesus healed who had been crippled for most of his life. Shazam, as Pyle says, that word means to, uh, it's an exclamation. It introduces a, an extraordinary deed or a, a story that's just extraordinary. And I think this story this morning is just that. It comes as a surprise to each and every one of us. You know, the meaning of the word surprise is to astonish or to wonder or to disbelief, or have shock. And the story in Mark does just that for us. There's several things that it's just hard to believe happened the way that they happened. And so I began by saying, surprise, 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 as we move into the story. And when he returned, that is when Jesus returned to Capernaum after several days, it was reported that he was at home. So many gathered around that there was no room for them, not even in the, to come in the front door. And he was speaking the word to them. And some people came bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof uh, above him. And after having dug through it, they let down the man the mat on which the man was laying. And then Jesus saw their faith, or when he saw their faith, he said to the paraplegic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there, uh, questioning in their hearts, Why does this fellow speak in this way? It's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And once Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves, and he said to them, Why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paraplegic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Stand up and take your mat and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paraplegic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat, and go to your home. And he stood up immediately. He took the mat and went out before all of them, so that they were amazed and glorified God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. Pray with me. Father, as we read this story again for another time, afresh and anew, Lord, it has a power. It was a surprise, Lord, not as much that the man was healed, but, Father, that the man's sins were forgiven. Help us not to miss that message this morning. 
as we look at the other three surprises found here. Help us to look to you, look to salvation through Jesus Christ, your Son. Help us, Father, to take it all in and be surprised by your Spirit as you speak today. In Christ's name, amen. Surprise. It was a great surprise. I think first to the the man who was paralyzed. He came to this house and people were everywhere. They couldn't even get close to the house, to the front door to get in to see this man, Jesus. They weren't surprised by the crowd, no. Because by this time, and Jesus had been speaking all over the place, and crowds would grow and they would get larger and larger and larger with every time that he spoke. So it wasn't a surprise to this paralyzed man that the crowd was that large and that it was growing larger each and every day. And it also wasn't a surprise that the four friends tried to bring this man to Jesus. As scripture says that all four or five of them really had faith and they believed that Christ could touch him and could bring about healing in his life. And so they were not surprised that, uh, to have this faith. They, they were really enthusiastic about their faith. They came to this place that Jesus was and they said, we're determined to do whatever it takes to get before Christ. Are you this morning determined, not surprised, but are you determined to get before Christ? During this next 40 days of prayer, are you seeking time and time again every day, once a week with your prayer triplets to get before Christ and ask God, Lord, surprise us today. Are you really looking for God to surprise you? Many times we don't. We look at the day with, the, with no surprises in it. Uh, many of us, it, it scares us to be surprised by God. But in reality, we should be saying to God, surprise us with the day. These four men took the man paralyzed on a mat up to the top of the roof. See, the steps went up on the outside of the house. and So they could get to the rooftop, but they just couldn't get in the front door. So they took him to the rooftop, and they began to dig the roof off. Uh, the roofs in, in Jerusalem during that time were made out of mud and, and grass, and the clay would dry hard, and that would seal off any rain that would come uh, when it came. And so they dug down into that mud and that grass, and, and they made a big hole in the top of that roof, right over where Jesus was teaching, and they let the mat down. Jesus said to the man, not get up and be healed. The real surprise was to the man that Jesus didn't heal him right at first. The surprise was that Jesus said, son, your sins are forgiven. He came for healing not for forgiveness. And sometimes we look for the wrong things when we come into the presence of Jesus. Sometimes Jesus is doing something else before he can do what we ask him to do. And that was the case here. Jesus surprised the man, the man expecting to say, take your bed and walk. But Jesus said, your sin or forgiven. Couldn't have been a better surprise. He could have stayed lame the rest of his life. But to have the Son of God say, you are forgiven, was a great surprise. The scripture says, Jesus saw their faith. It was a collection, a collective's faith owned by all five of these men, all believed that Jesus could heal the paralyzed man. They believed to the point that they did uh, let nothing stop them to get him to Jesus. And then with all the faith they had, 
the surprise was Jesus didn't heal. There's another surprise in the story, though, for it begins that there were those who were sitting there. They were religious leaders, maybe some Pharisees. They were called scribes, might have been some of the religious lawyers of that day. And they were sitting there, and Jesus was there, and the man was lowered down. And they were surprised that Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. And they began to mumble and groan and complain and began to question in their hearts. It doesn't say that they question out loud at this point, but in their hearts and in their minds and their attitudes, they question Christ. For they say, why does this man say this? Or it's blaspheming to say that you can forgive sins. Only God can forgive sins. But what they didn't understand was this was God. Jesus was God. As soon as he perceived the attitude of these religious leaders, the scripture says that he spoke out to them. It was no surprise that the religious leaders questioned him. They had been questioning him since the first time he spoke in the temple. They questioned him because of his authority. They questioned him because of his message. They questioned him constantly over and over again. It's blaspheming, they said. Who can forgive sins but God? Who? There was no surprise also when Jesus perceived their attitudes and their uh, objections. For Jesus knew constantly when people were around him, he had a perception about people. He knew their attitude. You may think sometimes, well, I don't, I won't say anything. I'm going to have this bad attitude because I'm upset over something right now. But, you know, God even knows it when we think we're hiding it. These men thought they were hiding it. It was no surprise to Jesus that these leaders talked behind his back. He couldn't hear their comments, but he knew they were questioning his authority and who he was, his person. However, it was a surprise for the leaders when the Lord began to question them. For the scripture says, Jesus looked at them and said, why do you raise such questions in your heart? Why do you doubt, in other words, who I am and what I can do. You don't think I can forgive sins? Another question, he says, which is easier to say, that this man's sins are forgiven or to tell him to get up and to walk out of this place after years of being paralyzed? Oh, the easiest question would be to say, your sins are forgiven. Maybe not the, the truer question, but that would be the easier question. Because if he says, get up and walk, the man has to do that. And Christ is then set forth. The third surprise was the surprise of the crowd. That day there was a huge crowd there it would be like being in this building and this, every pew in this place being full, every seat in the choir being full, and there would be people coming into the doors on both sides and from the back the foyer would be filled and you couldn't get into this place. That's what was going on in this house where Jesus was teaching. That crowd, though, was surprised that day. <laughs> 
It was not a surprise that the purpose of the healing was, was not for the sake of making the man whole. That was really not a surprise because any time Christ healed someone, he didn't heal them just for the sake of the healing. Christ healed people to glorify God. The purpose of this healing was for everyone to know that Jesus was the Son of Man, the Scripture says, or the Son of God. The purpose was for everyone to know that Jesus had the power and the authority to change people in their lives and to make them whole again and to forgive of sin. It was no surprise to Jesus that no one understood who, who he was, not even the paraplegic man. So Jesus looked over, not because of the crowd, not because of the man coming, not because of the faith of the four who brought him there, but the scripture says that he looked over and he said to him, stand up, get ready to walk. Take your mat. Always remember your disability. That mat was a symbol of that man's disability, that man's bondage, that man's crippledness. Take your mat. And go home. No, not go down to the temple and tell the priest. Go home. For home was a place of completeness and a place of wholeness like it should be for each of us today. Take your mat, stand up, and go home. That was really no surprise to Jesus it was really no surprise to that crowd that day because they had seen Jesus heal many people before this time. They knew Jesus could do it. What was the surprise? The surprise was this. The surprise to everyone, everyone was surprised to see the man walking in whole. His healing was immediate. There wasn't any medications. There wasn't any treatments he had to endure for weeks and months. He was made whole at that moment immediately, and he stood up and he walked. His healing was complete. I can see him not just walking home with that mat. He rolled that mat up, put it under his arm, and he took off running. <laughs> and he ran home. His healing brought amazement to that crowd. What's the definition of surprise? It's amazement. It's wonder. And they sat there and they looked at what God had done. Ultimately, though, what the whole story is about, ultimately, his healing glorified God the Father. Everything we do in this church to be done to bring glory and honor to God the Father through Jesus Christ the Son as the Holy Spirit works in your and my life today. Amen? That's God's purpose. Surprise! 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 God is the ultimate source. After Prim Pradham, who was a airline pilot, not airline pilot, but a, a fighter pilot in World War II, during that one of those flights in that time, his plane went down and he had to parachute out. And as he parachuted out of the plane, he hurt his leg. And for the rest of his life, he would be limp on that leg that he hurt. He said once this, I have a lame leg. Is it it's strange that God 
of God that he called me to preach the gospel in the Himalayan mountains. And preach in Nepal he did, but not without opposition. That included imprisonment in dungeons for years. This impacted his life and the life of others around him. In the span of 15 years, Prim spent 10 years in 14 different prisons in that area. His bold witness, however, bore the fruit of changing lives for Christ that included the guards and the prisoners, and they took it back home to their own people, their own families. Surprise! The Apostle Paul faced opposition to his faith in Christ for beginning used by God for being used by God to heal a man who was lame, just like this lame man Christ healed. But he used the opportunity to speak boldly for Christ. And he too spent time in a number of prisons. And people, both guards and prisoners, found forgiveness of their sin through his witness. Today, like Peter, we too may face opposition, yet we have family members, co-workers, fellow students, and others we know who desperately need to hear about the one, Jesus, in whom we, put, whom we have salvation, who died is to pay our penalty for our sins and was raised from the dead as proof of his power to forgive. May they hear as we prayerfully and boldly proclaim this good news of salvation found in Jesus Christ. Surprise! 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 Jesus can forgive your sins. And he will bow with me. Father, thank you. Thank you for your love. For John wrote, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Thank you for that. Thank you for your forgiveness that only comes through knowing Jesus Christ as personal Savior and Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving our souls, for making us whole, which is the greatest miracle that ever has ever happened. Now I pray, Lord, surprise us this morning as your spirit speaks to our hearts, to our minds, move our souls to make commitments that will be impactful and everlasting for all eternity today. For we ask this prayer in the name of Jesus, your Son. Amen.